A student plucks a fixed end string, creating a standing wave with four notes. The string is tuned such that the waves on the string travel 300 meters per second. All right, so let's go ahead and start by drawing our wave. So it says we have four nodes. Well, we already have two nodes at the end of the string since the, since the string can't vibrate. So I'm going to add a couple more and try to space those equally and then draw the wave. All right, since it's a standing wave, I want to draw its reflection with a dashed line. All right, and the first thing it says is ask me to count the number of wavelengths that we have on the string. I know from one node to the next node is half a wave. So I have three halves or a total of 1.5 waves. All right, then it says, what is the wavelength of the waves on the string? Well, wavelength is the length of one wave. If we remember that one wave looks like this, then our wavelength is this distance right here. So if I call this my total length L, and this is my wavelength lambda, to figure out lambda, I can use my number of waves or do my length divided by my number of waves. So 7, or I'm sorry, 0.73 divided by 1.5, and that gives me 0 0.487. And the units on that would be meters. Then it says, what is the frequency of the waves on this string? So next I'm going to use the wave equation, V equals F times lambda, which can be rearranged, solving for frequency, frequency equals V divided by lambda. Well, my velocity was given to me in the problem as 300 meters per second. So I can do 300 divided by 0.487, and that gives me a frequency of 616 hertz. All right, let's look at another example. So next one says a student wants to determine the frequencies that will produce a standing wave in the tube shown below. That's open on both sides. Fill out the chart below for the lowest three frequencies the string can produce from the fundamental frequency to the highest, All right, where FF stands for fundamental frequency. So let's start by drawing the fundamental frequency on this first tube. So I know that I have an antinode on both ends. Anytime the, the tube is open, I need an antinode on both ends. Fundamental frequency means I want as long of a lowest frequency as possible, which means as long of wave as possible, which means add as few nodes as possible, or only add a node if I need one. Well, I have an antinode on both ends. I do then need a node in between them, but I'll just have one node. All right, so then my strategy for a good drawing is at the top and bottom of the tube above the antinodes to draw a little line. So I'm play connect the dots. So connecting these together, I have my first wave. So this wave has we have a quarter wave from this from the antinode to node and another quarter wave over here. So that is a total of 0.5 waves. To figure out my wavelength, I'm going to use my total length of 0 0.47 meters. That's the total length capital L. To figure out my wavelength, then I would do my total length divided by the number of waves. And this will be measured in meters. All right, so I can do 0.47 divided by 0.5. which gives me 0 0.94. Remember that wavelength means how long would one full wave be? Since this is just half a wave, I really could just double that 0.47 to get 0.94. All right, next to find my frequency, I'm going to use the equation frequency equals velocity divided by wavelength. Since this is a sound wave in the air, I'm going to use the speed of sound, so V is going to be equal to 343 meters per second, and that is the speed of sound. 
in air. All right, so I will do 343 divided by 0.94, and that gives me 365. And the units on that are going to be hertz. All right, so next it's time to draw my next waveform. Still need an antinode on both sides, but I'm looking for the next lowest frequency that will resonate in this tube. Basically what I'm going to do is draw two nodes. All right, then if I want to draw my wave, I get a shape that looks like this. All right, that means I had a total of two nodes. I'm going to count my waves. I have 0.25 waves on this end. In the middle from node to node is 0.5. Then I have 0.25 over here. And that gives me a total of actually one full wave. All right, my wavelength. Well, I could do L divided by N, but since N is just 1, I have a full wave here. So that full wave is 0 0.47 meters long. So now I do 343. Again, the speed of sound, divided by 0.47, and I get 730 hertz. That's my frequency. To get the harmonic, the hint below tells us that we can take the frequency and divide it by the fundamental frequency. So 730 over 365, this should give us a full number, and this gives us 2. All right, next, for the number of nodes on the, on the next one, I'm just going to add one more. So now I have node, anti-node, node in the center, anti-node, node, anti-node. Anti so now I have a total of three nodes. I can draw my wave. Remember to only cross the center at the nodes. And I get this wave. Again, we got a quarter wave at each end. Half a node from half a wave from node to node. That gives me a total of 1.5 waves. Again, I can do uh, 0.47 divided by 1.5. This time the wavelength is a little shorter than the tube, so I'm getting 0 0.313. I take 343 meters per second, divide it by my wavelength that I just got, and I get 1095 hertz. I can take that 1095, divide it by 365, And I get 2.999, but really, that's just from the rounding. This is the third harmonic. All right, now be careful. The harmonics will not always go 1, 2, 3. There is an example where there will have a different answers. All right, let's do one more problem here. So this problem says a student submerges a pipe in a bucket of water. She sl slowly pulls the pipe out of the water and notices the pipe first resonates at the time shown in the picture on the left. All right, so we know in this column of air right here that we must have a standing wave. All right, let's go ahead and draw that standing wave. All right, so we know right here the, at the water, the air cannot vibrate, but at the open end of the tube, we should have an anti-node. So drawing my little wave in there, it's just a node on one end, an anti-node at the other. That's just one node total, and that is 0 0.25 waves. All right, the wavelength of the sound wave, well, this is my total distance, capital L, right here. And I know that 0 0.25 is my number of waves n. So the wavelength of the sound wave, I can just do that lambda equals L 
divided by n. So 0.167 divided by 0.25 gives me 0 0.668. And that'll be meters as my wavelength. All right, um, another way I could do it, if that's a quarter wave, I could just do L times 4. Because I know the wavelength is how long would one wave be? And it would be 0 0.668 meters. All right, then it says, what is the frequency of the tuning fork? I can get the frequency by using the wave equation. So I can use the frequency equals velocity divided by lambda. Since this is a wave in the air, I know the velocity is 343 meters per second. And I'm dividing that by 0 0.668 meters. All right, and that gives me this tuning fork must be 513 hertz. All right, so now it says the student continues to pull the pipe out of the water until the pipe resonates for a second time as shown. All right, so on this one, we're using the same tuning fork. So over here, I'm going to have the same frequency of 513 hertz. And I still have that velocity of 343 meters per second. But this time I'll have a different wavelength. I can get the wavelength, or before I do that, let's go ahead and draw what the wave will look like. So we're still going to set up a standing wave, but now in this longer pipe. Still have a node at the end, anti-node at the open end. So node at the water, anti-node at the open end. But this time we're just capturing, this wave's going to be just as large because it has the same frequency, so it'll have the same wavelength. But this time, we're going to have an anti-node, a node, and we're capturing that standing wave at the next anti-node. So going ahead and drawing in our wavelength, it'll look like that. So I have two nodes. How many wavelengths? Well, from node to node is 0.5, and from node to antinode is 0 0.25. So I have 0 0.75 waves total. Since I still have the same wavelength of 0 0.668, I can find the new length of the pipe by taking the number of waves and multiplying it by the wavelength. So now I can do 0 0.668 times 0 0.75 and that gives me 0 0.501 meters.